I'm Jessica Fisher, the Fright Family Coach. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. And we are going to be talking about how to get a dog to stop barking. This is a very highly requested video. I can't tell you how many people ask me about getting a dog to stop barking. And even people that aren't asking me specifically, I see posts all the time about getting dogs to stop barking. Um, so we're going to discuss getting a dog to stop barking right here in this video. But before I go any further, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Please, if you like this video, um, keep watching, but if you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Um, so you never miss another video. I talk about dog training, dog nutrition, um, canine enrichment, all around, almost anything pet related, um, and we talk about it. So if you're interested in any of these topics, make sure you're following me and subscribe. Um, also, when we're talking about, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to get a dog to stop barking. <clears throat> One of the canine commandments deals with barking in seven miracle steps to get your dog to obey commands, even if they failed before. This is a um, marketing title. <laughs> um, I don't generally use the word commands. I usually talk about cues, not commands, uh, but people are searching for commands. So there you go. Seven miracle steps to get your dog to obey commands and Barking is one of the things I talk about in this book. Get yourself a copy. You can get a digital copy, or if you're like me and you need to have it in your hand and flip through the pages to be able to read it and learn it and understand it, you can also go to, um, I put the link wherever it is in the description, um, where you can go and get your copy of the book, get the digital copy, or there's a link on that page to get a paperback copy. And I will be happy to send that to you because I mean, really, you can knock it out. It's not too terribly long. You can knock it out in like a couple of hours and be on your way to changing your life and your dog's life for the better, of course. So grab your copy. It's in the link is in the description. So let's get right into it. to stop barking. So the first thing you need to understand, no matter what it is you're trying to get your dog to do, <laughs> uh, no matter uh, what it is you are trying to get your dog to do, you need to first figure out why your dog is doing it. So your dog could be barking for many reasons. Your dog could be barking because they're bored. Um, your dog could be barking to alert you about something. Your dog could be barking for so many different reasons. Generally, those are the two biggest reasons. Um, occasionally, people will tell me that their dog is, you know, barking for other reasons. Maybe they're trying to get your attention, which again kind of leads into boredom barking. Um, let's see, where can it be? Okay, so the seven miracle steps, um, the digital version, it, I mean, you can get it for $5. It's super cheap. I, I, ever, I, you know, purposely made it very, very affordable so everyone can grab a copy. Somebody was just asking me about that. So, um, first you need to figure out why your dog is barking. So if your dog is bored and barking, and this is, this could be one of the things where your dog is barking maybe at you or at, like, playfully at another dog. Um, like maybe you have two dogs in your home and one of them's trying to get the other one to play. Um, then yeah, uh, somebody just said separation anxiety. Dogs do bark when they have separation anxiety and that's a whole other issue. Um, if your dog has separation anxiety, you have to treat for separation anxiety and that's a whole other video. In fact, I've done videos on that. I've done many posts on separation anxiety in my group. Um, I can put a link to the group uh, below once I'm done with this video. If you're not already a member, I highly suggest you joining. 
Um, but separation anxiety is a whole other beast. So, um, but the two main reasons your dog is going to be barking if they don't have separation anxiety is because they're bored or because they're trying to alert you to something. So if they're bored, the best thing you can do is to entertain them. <laughs> um, dogs like us, like many other creatures, we need stimulation. Um, if your dog is not getting adequate exercise, both mentally and physically, they are going to do whatever they can do to to, to get some stimulus going because they require it just like we do. Um, so that's another thing I talk about in, in the book um, is providing adequate mental and physical exercise for your dog. So um, uh, making sure you're providing uh, for your dog, and every dog is different, the amount of physical and mental exercise that they need is super important. If your dog is barking out of boredom um, or trying to get your attention, meaning they're bored, then that is the number one thing you can do is to provide them physical and mental exercise. So you can take them for a walk. You can go out and play fetch with them. You can um, take them, you know, for a hike. You can, there are so many different, like can, uh, canine enrichment is a term that Kind of encompasses a lot of different things. You can use um, like brain toys. There, there are a bunch of different toys that you can buy for your dog or make for your dog, and you can actually provide them their meal in like a, a puzzle box type thing, so that they're working to get their food. You can, I mean, there, are, there are endless options and way too many to discuss in this video, but providing them that physical and mental exercise that they need is going to be uber important. Um, now, if they're barking to alert you for something, this is actually their job. So when humans domesticated wolves into dogs, their primary uh, objective in doing that was to have an alert system most often when um, you know humans were sleeping at night but also I mean just any time during, during the day as well when the dogs are awake so or at, at the time it would have been wolves so generally you would have had like small camps of humans many 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 years ago and when we start started domesticating dogs Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I see all the, all the different comments from you guys. I really appreciate it. So when we started domesticating dogs, they were like an alert system for us because humans, you know, we have to sleep and we're not always, you know, paying 100% attention to whatever is going on around us. If we're, you know, preparing meals or um, back then, maybe you were training for battle, who knows? Um, so dogs were an alert system and this is like ingrained in them. That's what they do. Their job is not to protect, but actually to alert us. So when your dog starts barking at something, even if you think they're barking at nothing, um, I believe, I, I looked this up so long ago, but I want to not lie to you, but I believe that it's like five miles is the recorded, like the greatest distance recorded that a dog has heard something. So in a noise from five miles away, a dog heard. That sounds insane to me because obviously our ears can't hear things that are that far off in the distance. But basically what I'm trying to get across is that your dogs hear things that you have absolutely no idea are going on around you. So even when you think your dog may be barking at absolutely nothing, a lot, yes. <laughs> and I I just, okay, so Kimberly was just saying that um, it's their job to bark. It's a great reminder. Zoe and Rodrigo bark a lot. And Kimberly, I know you live like on this uber beautiful property in the Pacific Northwest. So there are probably so many things your dogs are hearing, whether it's like, I mean, they could probably be hearing like moles or voles digging under the ground and like, oh my gosh, there's something under, the, under there. And you have no idea, right? So like, I can just like see your dogs on your big beautiful property <laughs> and I'm thinking like there are so many things your dogs can be hearing that you have no idea are even going on. But that's their job is to alert us to potential dangers. And then it's our job to step in and take over to protect. So we have to 
create a system with our dogs. And I actually talk about a system in my book, um, The Seven Miracle Steps. I talk about a system. So you intervene. Your dog alerts you to a potential danger. And then it's our job, just like it's their job to alert, it's our job to step in and take over. Let your dog know that you understand they heard you that, that, or you heard them. And then you're going to take over and protect. You're going to let them know, okay, I've got it. Maybe it's actually not a threat or not a danger. And I'm going to use my body language to let my dog know that everything is okay. Everything's cool. I've got it. I heard you. We're great. So can you, my dogs can hear our cars before we get to the driveway. Yes, absolutely. I know my dog and actually dogs I've had in the past, they can differentiate my car from my husband's car. And it's absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, because they do have such great hearing, but the, it, that's, that's really their job is to alert us. Our job is to take in and, um, step in and take over as the protector. So when we're talking about getting our dogs to stop barking, ultimately, if it's an alert bark, which most people have the biggest issues with, um, from what I'm seeing people, you know, asking me questions about alert barking is what they have the most problem with. And it's really because we're not, we don't know culturally, you know, just in our society, we, we don't take into account how our dog's brains are wired and what they're actually doing to be able to adequately respond to it. So when you're just shouting and yelling and telling them, no, stop barking, in your dog's mind, you're like, oh my gosh, you hear it too? You're gonna bark with me? That means there's really something to me, like really super threatening if you're doing it too. So we gotta keep barking because at that point, it's the only uh, weapon that your dog has to keep this potential threat at bay. So they're gonna just keep barking and keep barking louder because they think you're barking with them. So that's the absolute worst thing I think that anybody could potentially do. Um, don't yell and tell them to stop barking because they don't have any idea what you're talking about. They just think you're barking with them. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so what, what we have to do is actually get in there, develop a system with our dogs. At this point, I have, for ex example, my dog Kim and the technique that I teach all of my in-home clients and the technique that I talk about in the seven miracle steps. I have my dog trained to where she alert barks at something, whatever that may be. And either my husband and I will tell her, thank you. And she stops barking. And it's absolutely amazing <laughs> because she knows at that point that we acknowledge that she has found or heard a potential threat or danger and that we're taking over and she can then go and relax. And she does. We tell her, thank you. She stops barking. If she's outside, she comes inside and lays down. If she's at a window or a door, she comes back over to us and calms right back down and lays down. And that's the absolute best thing that you could have in your home um, is for your you and your dog to understand each other. Um, so that's really what I wanted to get across in this video about how to get a dog to stop barking. Understanding each other is going to be the absolute best tool you have in your tool belt to get a dog to stop barking. So I've talked about it a lot, but that's because I'm super proud of it. It's a really short read. Um, you could read it in just a couple of hours and get to work. The seven miracle steps outlines what I call my seven canine commandments. And these are the things that I have every one of my in-home clients put in place in their homes before we begin to, uh, let's see when we're going outside, to excited barking. So excited barking. Yes, I didn't talk about excited barking. Excited barking is really fun. I actually really love when a dog is excited barking because it lets me know like just how much, like how high of a value whatever activity is going on that your dog places on that activity. So for instance, somebody is just commenting that um, Zoe barks like crazy when we're going outside to play. So Zoe knows that when you go outside and you're gonna play, you may have like a ball or a toy in your hand. And that 
activity has such high value to Zoe. She's super excited barking. Um, first of all, what, what you can do is uh, train impulse control. And I have another video I can link to um, where I was demonstrating, I was actually demonstrating impulse control at a doorway, but it really applies in any situation. Um, so when we train impulse control, we're like taking baby steps towards that action or behavior and rewarding the calm at every step. Um, but I love when we do have excited barking because again, it tells us like in this instance, Zoe has such high value on going outside to play, you can use that activity as a reward for other training that you're doing. So if you're training something maybe that's really difficult for your dog, whether it's a recall or maybe if you're training like agility or anything like that, something that might be more difficult, like, you know, a sit, a come here, a stay, those tend to be pretty easy for most dogs. But when you're training something harder, we'd like to find really high value rewards. So if Zoe's high, high value reward is going outside to play, you can use that as a reward for like something difficult that you're training. And so I love when dogs excited or, or like excited barking at something that's, I just love it because I like, I see an opportunity in it where most people are gonna see like frustration. I try to turn frustration into opportunity. And I love to do that, especially with our dogs because that's what they're telling us. They're not telling us be mad at me because I'm doing something you don't want me to do. They're telling us they really love or they really don't like something. So it's an opportunity for us to learn more about our dogs. So I love that. Thank you for mentioning excited barking, Kimberly. Um, so grab your copy of Seven Miracle Steps. It's a really short read. The seven canine commandments are what I have all of my in-home clients put in place in their home before we begin any kind of extensive training. And I cannot tell you how many times I have gone to a client's home um, especially for like barking or potty training or, I mean, really simple things to me, I guess are simple because I'm, I, I train, <laughs> but they put the seven canine commandments in place in their home and they call me up a week later and they're like, I don't know if I need you to come back because I've put these, you know, seven commandments that you told me to put in place in my home and we're all good to go so far. Like I, I and I love hearing that because that's my goal ultimately in all of the training that I do is to keep dogs in their homes. So anything I can do to make sure dogs are staying in their loving forever homes um, really just fills my heart with joy. So I wanna thank you guys so much for being here and joining me live. I know it you know takes time out of your day when you're you know watching something live instead of uh, watching a recording. But even if you are watching this recording after I post it later, comments or questions, please post them below because I do get a notification and I'll have the opportunity to respond to you. Um, so thank you again so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.